I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Since I was not here at the uh, beginning of your presidency, let me enthusiastically uh, welcome you to the assumption of the presidency role and wish you the best uh, during uh, this month. I also uh, wish to thank you, Albania, for calling this very important meeting. And I also would like to give a special thanks to our briefers, SRSG Patton, Ms. Kabowska, and Ms. Rollins Weston for your illuminating remarks. I welcome the participation of the Ukrainian PR in our uh, midst today, as well as Mr. Michel, the President of the European Council. Since Russia launched its illegal and unprovoked further invasion of Ukraine, a mountain of credible reports of atrocities committed by Russia's forces against civilians has grown every day. These reports include horrific accounts of sexual violence. More and more allegations show Russia's soldiers sexually assaulting women and girls, as well as men and boys. We've heard from Ukraine's foreign minister of multiple cases of sexual violence by Russian soldiers in Ukrainian cities that were under the control of Russian forces. We've heard from Ukraine's deputy prime minister that Russian soldiers raped Ukrainian women for hours and then killed them. The corroborating evidence goes beyond Ukrainian officials. In Bucha, we have evidence of atrocities, including imagery that confirms the presence of mass graves. And you've heard just today from the SRSG. There in Bucha, there are indications of the indications of Russia's brutality include credible reports of violence perpetrated up close and in cold blood. Individuals killed execution style, bodies showing signs of torture and sexual violence against women and girls. There have been multiple reports from survivors of Russia's soldiers breaking down doors to basements where women were sheltering and raping them. These terrible acts were done in front of their children and they were filmed by the Russian soldiers. These are bone chilling accounts. And we know for every account we hear, many more are unknown. In addition to the women suffering inside of Ukraine, we cannot forget that more than 90%, and we've heard this referred to several times today, 90% of refugees from Ukraine are women and children. And we've heard before in this council, women and children bear disproportionately high risks in this war. Family separation leaves girls in particular at increased risk for sexual exploitation and trafficking. And we've heard sobering reports of traffickers targeting women as they seek protection abroad. So council members, we cannot stay silent. We must seek and achieve justice for victims, and we must do everything we can to prevent further violence. Responsibility starts first and foremost with Russia. As a reminder to the Russian Federation, Security Council Resolution 1820 recognized that rape and other forms of sexual violence can constitute war crimes and crimes against humanity. Furthermore, under international humanitarian law, sexual violence is prohibited. It is on Russia to take measures within its forces and its proxy forces to ensure adherence to this resolution and to international humanitarian law. It is on Russia to stop rape, violence, and atrocities from within its ranks. It is on Russia to end this unconscionable unprovoked war on the people of Ukraine, and we call on the Russian Federation to do just that. And though the primary responsibility rests with Russia, I also want to talk about what the rest of us can do to address this heartbreaking situation. The framework of cooperation established by Special Representative Patton and her team and signed with the government of Ukraine last month deserves our strong support. It should serve as a vehicle for UN alignment and co coordination. 
We should share the key elements of this framework, and we should do everything we can to support the Ukrainian authorities as they follow the framework. The United States will continue to support Special Representative Patton's office to facilitate this important work. The Commission of Inquiry created by the Human Rights Council can also ensure Russia does not get away with hiding atrocities. Last month, the HRC passed another resolution that called for the Commission of Inquiry to address the events in the areas of the Kiev, Chernihiv, Kirk, Kiev, and Sumy regions with a view to holding those responsible to account. Both the Commission of Inquiry and the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission in Ukraine are critical to ensuring accountability. Sharing information and documenting crimes is critical to ensuring accountability for crimes of rape and other forms of gender-based violence. This can only be done through effective investigations of reports of such crimes and trials in appropriate criminal courts. And all of this requires resources. Many of this council, have, many on this council have emphasized their political commitments to preventing gender-based violence. Now is the time to provide proof of that commitment, to match words with actions. Ukraine is counting on us. Finally, as we work to achieve accountability, we must also do right by the survivors of sexual violence. They urgently need improved and expanded comprehensive service provisions, including sexual and reproductive health services, medical and specialized mental health services, legal assistance, and livelihood support. All of this work needs to be survivor-centered and trauma-informed. Above all, it must give survivors hope. Together, let us take on the scourge of conflict-related sexual violence. Let us demand accountability and justice for survivors and provide the resources to see it through. And let us do everything, everything in our power to prevent more violence and end Russia's unconscionable war. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement.